Well, hello there. So the Ottawa real estate market was kind of mixed in August. A little come see, come sa, as my people like to say. We're gonna tell you all about it. And we'll also talk about where Canada's big six banks predict interest rates are headed. We'll bust a few myths. And finally, nerds rejoice. We're going to introduce a brand new stat to these updates. All of this and more in your very mindful, very demure, September 2024 Ottawa real estate market update. Let's go. Now, before we dive into the stats, I do have a, a very quick and very exciting announcement to make. I recently partnered with the very, very bright folks over at the Canadian Real Estate Investor Podcast. They're the number one ranked real estate podcast in all of Canada. And together, we're going to start hosting regular real estate investor meetups right here in Ottawa, starting with our very first ever meetup on September 10th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Clock Tower Brew Pub in Westboro. Uh, that would be at 418 Richmond Road. So these meetups are open to anyone with an interest in real estate, uh, in particular real estate investing, whether you're a seasoned investor with a huge portfolio or you're, you're brand new and just curious, you are welcome here. And there's no cost to these. It'll be very casual, no formal presentations, no sales pitches, I promise. The intention is purely to provide like-minded individuals with a chance to gather, chat, and learn about a topic that interests them. And who knows, you might forge, you might forge new partnerships uh, while you're there. Okay, so for anyone interested in attending, please check out the link in this video's description. And again, uh, the goal for these meetups is for them to become uh, regular occurrences. So if you can't make it to the first one, don't cry. All right, there will be other opportunities. Hope to see you there. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about what we saw in Ottawa for the month of August, shall we? About time. As always, we'll kick things off with freehold properties. Those are homes without condo fees. And let's get those August 2024 freehold sales stats up on the screen for you right now. Did you see it? Did you catch the new stat? All right, we'll get to it. But first, let me tell you that we sold a total of 994 freehold properties in Ottawa for the month of August. That's about a 10% drop from July, month that comes before August, but it's by far the best August total we've seen for the past three years. And we've been in the 800s for August 22 and 23. That being said, keep in mind that in the second half of 2022 and throughout all of 2023, we experienced like 10, 15 year lows for sales volume in Ottawa. So we're not exactly like clearing a high bar here when we say that this year's total was stronger. And to give you some added context, in a typical August, pre-pandemic, we would have expected to see around 1,200 sales occur in Ottawa. So 994, still a relatively low total, but I personally view it as a healthy one, right? As I've said before, I think lower sales volume when compared to our pre-pandemic and, and peak years is just gonna be the new normal, at least for a while, due to challenges with affordability, the growing number of, of people who are now choosing to rent rather than buy. Cool? Cool. Now let's talk prices, All right? The average sale price for a freehold home in August was a little over $714,000. That's about a 2.5% drop from July's average price of about $732,000. But 714K also happens to be the highest average sale price we've ever seen in Ottawa for the month of August. So. The news is kind of mixed there, right? Like, uh, believe it or not, the second and third highest August average sale prices came in 22 and 23. So you've got the three highest August average sale prices ever coming in three of the years with the lowest August sales volume in recent history, right? So how do we, like, how do we reconcile those things? Well, if anything, to me, this serves as a reminder that you should always be taking a long view of things when it comes to real estate because in spite of short-term fluctuations, in spite of other stats like sales volume and inventory and all these fancy ratios, and in, in spite of all the noise that we're constantly bombarded with when it comes to real estate, market crash, anyone? No? Okay. The one constant, right? The thing that you can set your clock to, I don't have a watch, but you set your clock to, especially for freehold homes, is that over time, prices go up, right? They just do, and they always have, right? When you, when you really zoom out and you look at the chart for home prices in Ottawa over decades, the trend is clear as day, right? The chart looks like that. I never know, is it like this or like this when I'm on camera, Andrew? <laughs> Which one is it? Do I do this or this when I'm on camera? This one. Okay, all right, cool. 
So right to left. All right, so the chart is like this, not like this, it's like this, it goes up, all right? You can take literally any period of over five years, all right? So call it like six plus years at any point in time for Ottawa, and you'll see an increase in housing prices, often a significant one, right? And now I know, I know some will say that hey, just because something has been true in the past doesn't guarantee it'll continue to be true in the future. And that's a fair point. None of us can know for certain what the future holds, but I mean, as the prices of materials and labor increase over time, so does the cost of building a home, and therefore what the builder of that home has to charge for that home in order to make a profit. Uh, and when building homes stops being profitable, builders stop building, that leads to supply shortages, which as we've seen, also tends to push prices up over time. So it's just kind of hard for me to envision a scenario in which we see like a sustained and prolonged decrease in housing prices over time here. I would definitely take the other side of that bet. And historically speaking, that would have been the right call 100% of the time so far. All right, now I'm gonna step down from my soapbox now and, uh, and tell you about inventory. And this is, your, this is your regular reminder that inventory is a measure that accounts for both supply and demand all in one. In August, we saw freehold inventory tick up very slightly, right? We started August with 3.2 months of total freehold inventory. We ended with 3.3 months of inventory. It's obviously a very small increase, but it does mark the fourth straight month where we've seen inventory tick up from our April low of 2.3 months. Also, uh, homes that sold in August were on the market for an average of 37 days prior to selling. That's up from 33 days the previous month and uh, those sales went for an average of 98.1% of their list price. All right, now let's talk about the new listings to sales ratio. New listings to sales ratio? What's that, you ask? Well, it's our new stat, ladies and gentlemen, and it's very, very exciting. Uh, just to be clear, it's not like actually a new, new stat. It's just new to these updates. Like we didn't, we didn't invent it or anything. Folks have been using it for a while. And the reason we're going to be incorporating it moving forward is because quite frankly, I just got tired of doing the whole disclaimer around like the inventory levels tell us that we're in a buyer's market or a seller's market, but that's just an overgeneralization, blah, 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 blah. Boring, right? So this stat, the sales to new listings ratio is exactly what it sounds like. It's the number of sales for the month compared to the number of new listings for that same month. And then it's expressed as a percentage. So for example, if we sell 10 properties in a month and we also see 100 new listings hit the market that same month, the sales to new listings ratio for that month would be 10%. It's pretty straightforward, right? So now, how do we use it, right? What does it mean? What it mean? What I love about the sales to new listings ratio is that it's a great rule of thumb when trying to determine whether we're in a buyer's market, a seller's market, or a balanced market, especially when you pair the stat with inventory and number of days to sell. Right? Still with me? Good. All that being said, keep in mind there's no universal set of rules here, okay? But based on my experience for a true balanced market in Ottawa, we would expect to see the following three key stats. For a balanced market, we'd expect inventory to be between four and five months. We'd expect a sales to new listing ratio of between 40 and 60%. And we'd expect to see an average time to sell of between 30 and 60 days. Okay? For a true seller's market, we'd expect to see less than four months of inventory. We'd expect the sales to new listing ratio to be above 60, so we're selling more of those listings. And we'd expect the average time to sell to be less than 30 days. And then of course, for a true buyer's market, we'd expect the opposite, right? Inventory would be above five months, sales to new listing ratio below 40%, and average time on market more than 60 days, right? So that all being said, where do things stand right now? Well. Our sales to new listing ratio for August on freehold properties was 58%. Right? I also told you that inventory was 3.3 months and days to sell was 37 days. So two of the three stats, days to sell and sales to new listings ratio are in the balanced range, albeit just slightly, while inventory is still slightly in seller's market territory. All right, so all in all, I'd say we're not quite in a true balanced market. I describe it more like a balanced market that's like drizzled with seller sauce, you know? <laughs> that sounded, sounded a little weird. <laughs>
All right, so yeah, balanced market drizzle with seller sauce. Anyways, that's enough talk of seller sauce. Uh, let's move on and quickly rip through condos here before we get uh, to interest rates and the debunking of some common real estate myths. But now before we put the condo stats up, I, I do wanna just let you know that uh, this month's market update is brought to you by Beanie Babies. Beanie Babies, their values gotta go up again at some point, right? Hey, not my best work there, but what can you do? Let's get those condo stats up on the screen now. Boom goes the dynamite. All right, so a bit of a sluggish month for condos. The overall condo market continues to lag behind freehold a little bit. Resale condos are doing okay, whereas new construction units, most, most of which are now complete and listed on MLS, are having a really hard time moving because of price. Right. In August, we sold a total of 286 condos in Ottawa. That's in line with the totals we've seen over the past two years, which I will remind you were soft years in terms of sale volume, right? So no real improvement there for 2024. To put things into perspective, in recent years prior to the last three, typical August would see us selling around 400 condos in Ottawa. All right, so we're about 25% lower there. Now, the average sale price for condos in August was interesting. It came in at just under 412,000. Right, that's a big drop from the 440K average we saw in July. Now, as you know, if you watch these updates, the average selling price of condos does tend to fluctuate from month to month, and, and more so than it does for freehold homes. And if, and if you watch these updates again, you also know that for well over two years now, the average price for condos has landed somewhere between $410,000 and about $453,000 for pretty much every single month. The one exception being May of this year where we hit a 462K average price, okay? So this month's 412K average is still within that familiar range, but it's the closest we've come to the bottom of that range in a while. Now, as always, it's important to mention that we're dealing with a small one month sample size here. It's also worth noting that in recent years, for reasons I, I can't quite totally explain, to be honest, August has generally been a weaker month for condo sales, right? Maybe we'll see that familiar fall bump come and fix things next month. More on that later, that's a teaser. Uh, but yeah, wrapping up uh, things on price here, this month's drop could very well just be a blip. In any case, I'll be very interested to see what happens in September. All right. All right, moving on. Condo inventory ticked up slightly in August. We went from 3.1 months to 3.3 months of total inventory. When you also consider that the August sales to new listing ratio for condos was 57% and the average time to sell was 40 days, you end up with a similar overall market to that of freehold. Uh, that would be like a balanced-ish market, but with some lingering elements of a light seller's market. That sounded a lot better than balanced market with seller sauce. We'll stick with that one in the future. So yeah, all in all, a very interesting month for condos. Uh, the sales volume and price stats were weaker than I'd have expected, but the rest of the metrics point to like a fairly healthy market. So again, it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what develops, pun intended, in the months to come as far as condos are concerned. Okay? And of course, we will keep you informed as always. And with that, uh, let's move on to our final segment and talk about a couple of things we've seen in the news and on local real estate message boards as of late. Okay, so first things first, by the time you watch this video, the Bank of Canada will very likely have made its September interest rate announcement, which is set for September 4th. We are filming this on September 3rd, right? So we don't know for sure what the Bank of Canada will do yet. However, it is widely expected that, the, uh, that interest rates will be cut on September 4th, okay? Now, including September, there are three remaining rate announcements for 2024, and there's a pretty unanimous consensus right now that we're going to see multiple cuts to interest rates between now and the end of the year. To give you an idea, as of September 3rd, so before this month's rate announcement, the Bank of Canada's overnight rate, that's the one that they cut and raised, right? The Bank of Canada's overnight rate was at 4.5%. In a recent poll of the big six Canadian banks, three of the six banks predicted that the overnight rate would go from 4.5% to 4% by the end of 2024. The other three felt it would end up at 3.75%, so even lower by the end of the year. So like positive vibes, 
all around for anyone hoping to see rates come down, which is likely most of us. Really, unless you're like doing private lending, you're probably hoping rates come down. Now, all that being said, given all the talk of interest rates right now, uh, and given the fact that we're also starting fall, I thought this would be a good time to tackle four common misconceptions that I can all but guarantee you're going to hear in the days and weeks to come. You're going to hear a lot of these from other realtors, unfortunately, and probably also from like your friends, your family members, your colleagues, etc. So, so now you'll be prepared, all right? When you or one of the other seven people who watch these videos all the way to the end, hear someone mention one of these misconceptions, you'll be able to call them out, all right? And they're like, hey, you're, you're full of shit, grandma. Go spread your misinformation elsewhere. Thanksgiving's over. Be nice to your grandma, please. She means well, all right? That being said, let's dive in. All right, misconception number one, when the Bank of Canada cuts rates, all mortgage rates go down. All right, so I, I've mentioned this a bunch in the past. I'm not gonna harp on it too long here. But when the Bank of Canada cuts interest rates, it only impacts variable rate mortgages. Fixed rate mortgages, like your five-year fixed, your three-year fixed, et cetera, they remain unchanged. They are not directly impacted in any way by changes to the Bank of Canada's overnight rate, ever, ever. So if you're planning on getting a mortgage in the near future, and you're among the large, large, large majority of folks who will be going with a fixed rate because those are still significantly lower than variable right now, then there's zero advantage to like holding off until the Bank of Canada's next announcement because everyone says they're gonna cut rates again, right? They might be cutting rates again, but not for you, all right? So that's misconception number one. Misconception number two. Hey, once the Bank of Canada cuts interest rates to 3.75%, it means I'll be able to get a 3.75% interest rate on my variable mortgage. No, you won't. So I hear this a lot. Right? People say uh, they wanna wait to buy because they heard on the news that the banks are predicting that by the end of the year, we'll be able to get a mortgage at 3.75%. Understand that when the Bank of Canada cuts interest rates, the rates they are cutting, or the rate they are cutting, is the overnight rate. The overnight rate is the rate that banks have to pay when they borrow money, right? And if you know anything about banks, you know that they love profits, right? It's like, it's kind of their thing, right? So, and so if, if it costs the bank 3.75% to borrow money, they sure as hell aren't lending it to you at the same rate. Right? Those executive bonuses are not gonna pay themselves. So when banks borrow money, they pay the overnight rate, but when you borrow money, you pay something called the prime rate, if you're lucky, right? Otherwise you're paying prime plus, right? And so the, the prime rate's going to be higher than the overnight rate. Now each lender sets their own prime rate, so there can be differences here and there, but the big banks generally move in lockstep when it comes to the prime rate. <clears throat> and to give you an idea, the prime rate right now is the overnight rate plus 2.2%. Even if the Bank of Canada cuts rates to 3.75%, your variable mortgage rate, one of the big six banks, is still likely to be just under 6% interest, uh, which is once again, way higher than what you'd pay if you just went with a fixed rate right now. All right, so like, sorry to, sorry to burst your bubble on that. Uh, I don't think you're gonna see a 3.75% mortgage anytime soon. All right, misconception number three. Now that interest rates are coming down, the real estate market's about to go crazy. Get in now before prices explode. All right. Like I said in the first part of this video, if you buy real estate here and you hold it for five, six, seven, eight plus years, I firmly believe that you're going to do really, really ridiculously well, okay? That being said, let me reiterate that these interest rate cuts in very large part really only help the people who already have variable rate mortgages, right? They, they, they relieve a little bit of pain for those folks. But so long as fixed rates remain significantly lower than variable, these rate cuts aren't doing anything in the way of providing a viable and more affordable option for folks who are looking to buy or who are looking to get a mortgage. So if you were sitting around two weeks ago thinking it's too expensive to buy a home right now, then having the Bank of Canada cut its rate to four or even 3.75% changes nothing for you, right? So, so why then would we think or promote the idea that these rate cuts are going to all of a sudden cause this, this surge of pent up buyer demand to flood the market, right? Like 
makes no sense. So I think the real estate market in Ottawa should continue to be healthy overall. I think we'll see continued steady growth here, but to claim that these rate cuts are gonna trigger this insane 2021 level seller's market to reemerge is ridiculous as far as I'm concerned. For anything close to that level of frenzy to happen again, I think interest rates would really have to go back down to around where they were in 2021. And let me tell you, we'd need a lot more rate cuts for that to happen. And it's also worth noting that there's, there's not a single knowledgeable person that I know who thinks we're going to see interest rates go back to 2021 levels anytime soon, if ever. All right, so the advice, as always, remains to stop trying to time the market and just buy when you're ready and sell when you're ready. So much easier, all right? That takes us to our fourth and final misconception. Let's talk about the fall market bump. All right, I alluded to it earlier. So. There is this prevailing notion in Ottawa real estate, and I hear this all the time from colleagues, that the real estate market here in July and August just kind of like dies off, right? Just super quiet. But then once fall hits, boom, right? Things pick up again, and there's this bump in activity come September and October. That's the fall market bump, right? As a result, a lot of folks here will tell you that, hey, if you wanna sell, but you miss the spring market, which runs from April to June, you're better to just hold off until fall to list your home, right? They'll tell you that the summer real estate market here is dead, everyone's on vacation, buyers, agents, mortgage brokers, lawyers, they're all, they're all gone, right? No one wants to buy in the summer, they're all more preoccupied with enjoying the nice weather, and then once summer's over and the kids are back in school, well, that's when everyone gets, gets right back to their real estate. Right? But here's the thing, it's just not true. It's, it's a total myth, all right? And, and to be clear, uh, before I debunk this myth, uh, when agents talk about the, the, how fall is busier than summer, I don't think they're, they're knowingly lying to you or attempting to mislead you. I think that for the most part, they genuinely believe what they're saying. They're just suffering from a bit of confirmation bias, right? The pace of everything does feel slower in summer, especially coming off spring when you're in real estate. Right, and, and the explanation of people being away and in vacation mode it makes logical sense, right? But it also ignores a bunch of other factors which can motivate people to buy and or sell real estate at any other given time, like the summer, right? So that all being said, what does the data say about all this, okay? Well, first, let's quickly define the five seasons of a typical year in Ottawa real estate, right? The first season runs from November to January and it's called icy hell. Right? Icy hell season is pretty much always our slowest season by a lot. Next, you have pre-spring, right? which is February and March. Pre-spring usually serves as a pretty good indicator of the type of year it's gonna be. Then of course you have spring, which runs from April to June. It's by far our busiest season. It's where you'll pretty much always see the highest number of transactions. And it's also where you'll often see the highest average sale prices. Right? And then after that, you have summer, which is July and August. And then finally, you have fall, which is September and October. And those are the two seasons we're going to compare here, okay? So here's what I did. I went back nine full years, starting in 2015, uh, which is unfortunately only as far back as our system goes, right? And for each full year, I compared the total number of freehold homes sold in the summer versus the fall. And then I also looked at the average selling price for summer and fall, right? For sales volume, if the fall and summer totals were within 3% of one another, I considered it a draw. And then for average selling price, if the totals were within 1.5% of each other, I also considered that a draw. And then I went back and I redid the whole thing for condos, all right? So here's what the data, not our feelings, but the data tells us. From 2015 to 2023, that's nine full years, when it comes to freehold sales volume, okay, total number of sales, there was one year where we sold more homes in the fall than we did in the summer. There was one year where it was a draw, and then there were seven years where we actually sold more homes in the summer than we did in the fall. Now for condos, we sold more homes in the summer every single year, all nine. Okay. So in general, we actually sell more homes in the summer here than we do in the fall, in spite of what some people will tell you, right? Uh, but now, hey, what about prices? Right? What about, what about selling prices? Well, for those same nine years, when it comes to freehold, we had three years where the average selling price was higher in the fall than the summer. So a fall bump there, but we also had three years where it was higher in the summer than it was in the fall. 
and then we had three years where it was a draw. And now for condos, you're gonna see a similar distribution. Uh, over those nine years, the average selling price was higher in the fall than it was in the summer four times, right? Two times it was higher in summer than fall, and then three times it was a draw, right? So a pretty even distribution when it comes to average selling price. There's no real pattern to speak of. There's definitely no fall bump, right? The data doesn't lie. Right? There's, there's the, again, there's no truth to this notion that the auto real estate market is busier or stronger in the fall than it is in the summer. And so what that means is there's really no clear advantage or disadvantage to selling in the summer versus the fall or vice versa. And another quick little important note here is that even in years where we did have a stronger summer or, or a stronger fall, uh, the gap between the two seasons was never really that big, right? Like, and, and that applies across the board, freehold, condo, sales volume, price, everything. There's never, there's just never a big gap between summer and fall. So really, when it comes to auto or real estate, I don't think we need to view summer and fall as, as separate seasons at all, right? The market just really kind of behaves the same across both, right? So I think we should just simplify and start calling it like summall or fummer. We'll workshop it. But in the meantime, if you're thinking of making a move this summer, uh, we'd be happy to help, right? You can reach out to me directly anytime using the contact information right here. Uh, and from there, we can set up an initial discovery call to chat about your real estate goals. All right, that will do it for this month. I do hope to hear from a few of you. And I also look forward to hopefully meeting some of you in person at our September Investor Meetup. Meetup, once again, is happening September 10th, 6 to 8 at the Clock Tower Pub in Westboro. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next month.